who Robbie Frankie is as a person and why is he doing what he's doing and what is his future yeah. focus probably you know just understand that to start well well the funny thing is that you know if you ask me this like a year ago uh my motivations were very kind of uh about reaching up it was about you know just because i was young when i started because i took massive risks since i was 18 i never had this concept of protecting my assets you know making protecting what i have it would always be the most risky dangerous situations and it's not when i say risky i don't mean like like you know when somebody opens a business and that's risky because it's a new business i mean like 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 i'm gonna do a lecture that has 800 people in it in two weeks or i lose thirty thousand dollars uh and i have to start from scratch kind of risky uh which by the way i succeeded (laughs) um yeah um so i was like a daredevil and 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 that got me successful very very fast from a very from from just when i i started i I, I already started making uh over ten thousand dollars a month uh just because i found the right mentor i i took a loan just to work with him i took massive risks to learn from him you know when you get a mentor you pay him a lot and that's like a you know a big risk i actually took um about four thousand dollars and and paid him and then i took another uh, $10,000. I don't remember. I don't know how exactly the amount translates to uh, dollars, but it took about $10,000. And I said, okay, I'm going to move into a hotel that's going to cost me $800 a day. And mind you, this is me when I was making 2000 a month. Wow. And, and basically I have two, three weeks to take what he teaches me and, and, and get, get some shit going or else I'm, I'm going to, lose so much money it's going to take me two years just to get it back yeah so that's how i started like that's literally how i started now of course i may i took many smaller risks before that but but financially that's how i started so i was like a big big risk taker and my motivation was were always like multiply you know 10x like 10 times more risk 10 times more reward 10x 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 and i I would spend like crazy i would spend about 120 percent of what i made so I would always be in a deficit. So if I made uh, five thousand dollars, I'd spend six thousand. If I made ten thousand, I'd spend twelve thousand. I made fifteen thousand, you know, and so on. It went up to like thirty thousand dollars. Now, at, at some point, um, luckily, uh, fairly early, um, you know, I, I I had a bad bet. So you know, you you start believing you're invincible. You keep taking these risks. Yeah, and eventually, uh, because because you believe that you know if you just burn the boats, you know that saying like where you have like no way of turning back anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. a do or die commitment. Yeah, and I'll just be successful. You know, I'll just commit to it. I create a situation where I have no choice, and mm. if I fail, I die. So you know, I feel I, it, it feels like you'll die. So it, it's like a hundred percent foolproof, but. But I'm like the guy who's like, who, who looks at you and he's like, but what if you fail? <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and not like the mediocre people who are like, oh, it's dangerous. I'm like, no, you have a chance of failing. Like, did you accept that risk? Right. And, and truth be known, I didn't. So, so when, I, when I had my first big failure, uh, I lost $20,000 in a day. And then I said, okay, so, you no, know, like, I, like I had a call with, with a, a potential client today and he said, um, you know, what do you think about plan B's? Yeah. Like about having a plan B if plan A fails. So, yeah. so I told him, I, I always have a plan B and plan B is if plan A fails, uh, do the bigger thing, <laughs> like plan bigger. <laughs> So, so, so back then it was like, okay, so the $20,000, I, I lost $20,000, it failed, the risk failed. Mm-hmm. So instead of fixing the problem and then trying again, maybe, yeah. um, it's like, imagine you're wounded. And so instead of healing the wound, you, you do it even harder. Yeah. So I took a bigger risk 
with mm. with a but but not like a twice bigger risk, like a ten times bigger risk, with wow. a ten times bigger reward. And then in the span of like three months, uh, I ended up losing over a hundred thousand uh, dollars, which for a guy who spent almost everything he made and relied on income, that was devastating. You yeah. Know? So, so today, um, you ask what motivates me. I'm, I'm, I'm much wiser. Um, I'm about the growth. I want to grow as fast as possible. I want to see every single area of my life grow, but I've gotten more, uh, grounded where it's like I came full circle. It's like, um, when I was 18, I learned about habits and how, you know, consistent daily small habits, uh, like an apple a day, 10 push ups a day, small things like that. If you just make, do them consistently over yeah. a long time, they'll make the biggest difference. Yeah. And then I got bored of it. So I said, fuck it. I want to take massive action. So I said, fuck the consistency. I want to make it in a bang. Like, I, I, I want to do like the up thing, you know, like bam. But the thing is when you do it, if you can't support that growth, that fast growth, so you have, you know, a small growth from the consistency alone, just, you know, one apple a day, five, 10 pushups a day, five minutes of meditation, small growth. Yeah. Then you have the super massive, extremely dangerous, risky, leveraged type of action, which is, looks like this. But the thing is, any growth, you have to support it with more actions. Right. So, so this is impossible. You can't do this and, and keep doing it because, uh, you know, let's say, you know, it's, it's like playing Russian roulette. Like, so the first time doesn't work, so it works. Second time work, works. Third time works. You know, you, you want to fail as fast as possible because actually the longer it takes you to fail, yeah. the harder you'll fall. Right. So I'm glad I, I didn't fail at the millions because then I don't know if I would have been able to bounce back. Right. So today what I'm focused on is and my biggest inspiration is like take every single area of your life that you want to be better at. And don't be like one of these guys who are like, you know, oh, you know, when I take care of my money, then I'll take care of my fitness. No, everything. Like what do you want from life? Imagine you had everything. What do you want? So I want health. I want, I want to feel good. I want to look good. I want to be famous. I want to make a lot of money. Um, you know, I want to read a lot and learn a lot. So just take all your goals, make them into daily habits. And then instead of doing the slow growth from consistency or the risky growth, that's again, it's not sustainable. So if it's going to go up and then it's going to crash, you know, there's no point. Yeah. Uh, I want to, I want to see like, how do I dumb it down? Like, how do I make sure I grow as fast as possible, like as high as possible, but make it consistent? And that's how I developed the philosophy of massive, consistent daily action. So, right. you know, some people are going to tell you to take massive action. Some people are going to tell you, tell you, you know, just be consistent. I tell you, do both. And that's why I do what I do, uh, which, you know, uploading five videos a day, meditating for an hour every day, uh, reading two hours every single day, um, you know, tons of Instagram posts, tons of Instagram activity, um, you know, just, just many, many more habits that I do on a massive, massive scale. And I do them every single day, uh, seven days a week. Right. So, so that's my, that's, that's my motivation today. It's just, it's, it's a lot more dumber. It's like, I don't want to think about it too much. I don't want it to be confusing. Um, I don't want to guess too much. I don't want to risk too much unless I see an opportunity that's, you know, smart, not just uh, hasty. And, you know, I, I, I want it to be so that I can look at what I did and just look at anybody else and say, Hey, like literally this is what I did. Like ABC, I just did that and you can do it too. And you'll get the exact same, you know, around that area of around the same results. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Are you already recording this or? Mm -hmm. Okay, I've not recorded this, so. <laughs> no, no, you don't need to. I'll, I'll send you the recording. Oh, okay. Okay, or something. Perfect, perfect. Good. So, um, what, so what is your goal? Like, you know, you're you're helping people. Um, look, I, I see that you have already, you know, made very good progress. You know, in in terms of YouTube followers, in terms of Instagram followers. Yeah. So, what is what is the number one probably question is? What is your goal? Okay. 
probably in two or three years? And where do you see yourself probably 10 years down the line? I mean, if you have people like me who was, who was still trying to follow you and, ins, you know, getting inspired from you, doing a lot of activity, you know, what is it that we, we can, you know? Well, um, th- this might be a bit of a controversial answer, but I mean, I, I, I don't really have like a whole, um, like, like I, I just take my vision. Yeah. Like, what do I want in my life? Like, say I could have had anything, you know, you know yeah. I can have anything, you know, money's not an issue. Yeah. What do I want? So I said, okay, I want to be famous. I want to lecture in front of thousands of people. Um, you know, I want to write 500 books in my lifetime. Wow. I want to, and not like short eBooks, but books. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I want to be renowned, world renowned. I want to hang out with the most successful people in the world. I want to travel. Um, I don't remember if I said it, but I want to have the best body and most amazing body possible. I want to have peace of mind. I want to have clarity. I want to be super smart and many more. And I, I'm, I, I'm not like, you know, one day I'll get there. You know, I, I'm, my goal is my motivation. My goal is the same today as it will be probably in a decade or two. It's simply progressive realization of my ideals. So I don't have a goal for two years from now or three years or, or 10 years because frankly, I don't know. I don't look at it like, like there's me and then there's a goal and then it's a moment that happened. Like I achieved the goal. I look at it like a spectrum where you get closer and closer to the ideal of that goal. Yeah. So, for example, I'm aiming for 10 million YouTube subscribers, which I'll need about a billion views for that. Right. I probably won't get to that, <laughs> but I'm aiming for it. You know, yeah. I'll keep moving until I get there. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't, you know, I, I constantly look at the future, but it doesn't change and I don't put a date on it. I just look at how I want my life to look. And I look at what I did today and I ask myself, did I, of course it's written down the things I need to do. So I don't need to guess if I did it, but did I do the things today that moved me the best step forward that I could take? That's it. And then, and you say, Oh, you know, it's just a step. It's like, okay, but then I'll do it again tomorrow. And then again, the next day, and then again, the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. Seven days a week, you know, 365 days a year. So, you know, by the time you ask me a month from now, Robbie, like, or a year from now, like, Robbie, um, you know, how are, how are you towards your goals? Like, how's, uh, how's, you know, what's changed? I'm like, nothing changed. I'm still taking daily actions, still moving one step closer every time. The biggest step I can take right now. Because, because if I, for example, with my goal of speaking weekly to, to crowds of over a thousand people, I'm not going to be able to do that right now. But am I able to maybe provide content, uh, speak with people, um, work with clients, you know, progressively realize that? Of course. So, you know, so that's the action that I take daily. And then as the audience grows, again, I used to public speak a lot, but I did it in one country. But now I'm expanding internationally, so it takes more time. You need more pieces, more fans everywhere. Yeah. That you actually have enough so you can actually go to cities and public speak just by the demand. Right. So, right. Um, so everything is being progressively realized every single day. So I don't look at two years from now, 10 years. I just look at now and the ideal, Ultimate. like yeah. the ideal future. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that is really, really good. And it's something really, you know, something really to think about actually, you know, because for me, I used to break it down in years, uh, like, you know, five years, 10 years. But what are you saying? It's kind of makes sense. It, you know, you have to see yourself, where do you want to end up or where do you want to, you know, what is the end goal? So it really makes sense. Good. Yeah. I just, I just skip ahead because I found that when, when you focus on dates, it's, it's, it's actually a problem because you, 
the thing is the person you are now is not the person you will be a week from now. So when you say I have a goal for five years from now, it's like two different people talking because the you right now is not the you uh, from two years later. Maybe you learn a skill that allows you to get there like 10 times faster. Right. So, uh, you know, maybe, you know, and maybe you do it slower, <laughs> but yeah. so if you're going to set a goal, a deadline, say, okay, two years from now, then what, what I do was would be like to set a really hard deadline, like actually make a commitment where there's a risk involved. Like, okay, I have to make it happen in two weeks, in two months, in two years. When you just look at it like, okay, what do I want to happen in two years? Um, probably you'll just limit yourself because maybe if you just think 10 times bigger, it could, be, it could happen in two months. So, yeah. so I don't play around with uh, potential. I play, I, you know, I play around with kind of having the image, like what, you know, what's gets, what gets me excited the most right now. And sometimes every once in a while, I just get like a, a burning desire towards a specific thing regarding my vision, my goals. And I'll just put so much effort into that. So it will progress much faster. Right. Right. Well, that's very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Good. The next question that I have is, uh, look, I come from um, a very middle class family. And, you know, for, for years, I have been in the uh, state of mind where, you know, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm fine. I'm better than average people. But after I read the 10x rule, which really, you know, kind of opened my mind and said, dude, you know, I have to really do a lot to, you know, become what I want to become and not live an average life. Now, I am trying to help people uh, to realize that same thing because, you know, I come from India and uh, you know, people are still not so aware that, you know, they, they have so much of potential. They have. So if I have to give you a number, 260 million people, they are in the middle class category. So middle class, out of 260 million, 70%, I'm assuming that they would be living with that average mentality, right? You know, just getting by, salary, you know, lazy to, you know, go beyond their limits and just getting by. And that's it, you know, getting things done. Mm -hmm. So my audience is, you know, is the people who are most likely in sales and in small businesses so what is the piece of advice that you will give uh, you know, to uh, people like me and other people who have realized that, look, we, were, have, we have been average. We are in sales, we are in business, we need to get ahead in life. What is the piece of advice you will, you will give us? Um, it just increase your sense of responsibility because when people say I'm good, first of all, most of the time it's wrong because <laughs> like, you know, I'm good as long as something doesn't go wrong. Yeah, that's true. But, but you know, I once had a, uh, a guy I sat with, you know, he asked me to, to come, so, you know, to invite me to a restaurant to, to talk to him. And he told me like, hey, I don't really, you know, money is not really like a thing for me. Like, you know, I don't really care that much about money. And I just, like in the middle of the, the restaurant, I, I just started yelling at him because, you need to increase your sense of responsibility because that, you know, saying, Oh, you know, middle class is fine. I'm being taken care of. You know, it's like, you're fucking selfish. Like what about mom? Yeah. Are you, the, is mom still working? Yeah. Oh yeah. You, you don't want to give her like another decade or two before she dies of old age, like a, another decade or two of, you know, just kind of resting and being happy that she made you. Yeah. What about dad? Okay. Does he still have to, to, to wash cars every day or you know, do the mechanic thing? It does whatever. He, no. It, it, do you think it's fine that mom and dad still need to worry about money and you're good? Do you think that that's, that makes fucking sense? And then you increase it a bit more and then you ask, okay, what about my girlfriend or my wife? Like, I'm like, again, I'm speaking to men here, but this could be easily applied to women. Yeah. Like, you know, be the man. Like, why does your woman, woman have to work? Yeah. You don't want to give her the choice whether she wants to work. 
And they're like, oh no, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an equal society. It's like, yeah, I'm not saying she doesn't, she's not supposed to work. And I'm saying, why not give her as your partner? Why not give your partner that ability? And then you expand it more and more. You know, what about your kids? Yeah. Uh, what sort of an example are you setting for them to just be average? Yeah. You look at, look, look at your decisions, you know, like for example, let's say you choose to stay at a job you don't like. And then your kid comes up to you, you know, when he's growing up, he's like, Hey dad, like I have a job and I have a dream. What should I do? Mm-hmm. You know, don't, don't be a hypocrite. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and, you know, and then you increase your, it even more. And then you ask, okay, what about helping people? You know, Dan Pena is one of my mentors and he, he taught me like, Robbie, you see, you know, the guys with the billboard, you know, with the board, like they hold the signs yeah petition and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. Are idiots i mean if they had money they could actually make a difference they wouldn't need to be one of a hundred people just sit standing there like the board yeah you know they could they could literally just hire you know you could you, you could literally hire a hundred people <laughs> on mm-hmm. minimum wage just to stand there like like that's yeah. what you amount to to like a person standing with a board <laughs> yeah. and so yeah, just you, you, once you like increase your sense of responsibility, um, most people can't do that or they're really afraid to do that because it's like, I'm, I'm vegan, by the way. So it's like people thinking about, oh, the animals, you know, and like, I don't even want to think about it. You know, like I'm, I'm not even, even, I didn't take of my, my shit yet, isn't taken, isn't taken care of. So you want me to think of the animals? No, no that's too much, too much right now. So that's what happens when I tell people like increase your responsibility zone. What do you, what do you take care of? What do you take responsibility for? Uh, so if your mom has financial issues, it's not her problem. It's your problem. Yeah. And if your girlfriend uh, has to work, it's her, it's your problem, not her problem. Yeah. Um, so then you increase it even more. What about again, helping people in general? Like you see a kid starving, you know, in the street, like you could have helped him. You know, you could have bought him lunch, but money is so tight with you that, yeah. you know, you have to choose yourself. You know, and it makes sense. Of course, you choose yourself, but why not have more? So yeah. people are very afraid of increasing that responsibility zone because it's, it's like when you just focus on you and, and nothing is wrong, you know, not, nothing is too wrong in your life. Yeah. You can be like, oh, I'm fine. But then if I tell you again, what about taking care of your family? You know, your big, you know, mom, dad, sisters, brothers, everything. It's like, because you realize like, oh shit, like I was resting. I was feeling like, you know, I did my stuff, you know, just like I do every day. You know, I finish my day with all the daily goals. And I honestly feel, you know, and this, this many years I didn't feel like that, but, but I honestly feel like, Hey, I did my part. Like I did the best I could. I honestly did everything in every area of my life. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, when you realize that, you know, y- you go like, Oh shit. Uh, mm. Like it's, I have so much shit that I didn't do. Like it, I thought it was, if this is like where you start, this is the finish line. You thought you were here. You're in the start. Like yeah. you're not even at the beginning. <laughs> true. 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 So, so that gives you that, you know, that fire under your ass. Perfect. Start thinking bigger. Not necessarily quit your job, just start thinking bigger. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, no, I like that. Thank you. So, so Robbie, as a person, if you have to stay motivated, you know, what are things that, that really keeps you going or what is it that you do? What, what is it that you consume? You know, I did one video today on not consuming garbage on social media. Like, you know, a lot of people waste time watching things which really probably, you know, help them, you know, watching funny chicken videos, kitten videos, baby videos. Come on, dude, you, you probably, you know, watch some Robbie Frank's video, probably you'll get more pumped up. <laughs> so <laughs> how do you, you know, um, stay motivated? What do you watch? You know, I know Grant Cardone is one of your force, uh, you know, motivation force. What else do you do? Well, I, uh, to be honest, I don't get motivated anymore. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and Grant Cardone also talks about you know, the difference between being obsessed and being motivated. Mm-hmm. Um, motivation is a feeling. It's when you feel like you want to do something. Yeah. You know, that, of course, that's not the textbook definition, but, you know, for the sake of purpose, how people treat the word, it's, uh, you know, I'm motivated. Yeah. 
to be honest, I'm not motivated. Like, you know, half, like, uh, to be honest, every second day I'm depressed or stressed or angry or, you know, it's, it's normal. Like it's, if people have this fantasy of like have every day happy, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, it's like the, the, the guy at the bottom feels good and feels like shit. The guy in the middle feels good, feels like shit. The guy at the top feels good and feels like shit. You know, yeah. I, you don't see any CEOs or actors walking, you know, like this. <laughs> so, so I, you know, sometimes it's, I'm bored, but I'll do it anyway. Or sometimes I, I don't want to go to the gym. I'll just go. I don't want to meditate. I'll just do it anyway. Sometimes, you know, I'm pissed off. I'll just make a video anyway. So it's not, I'm not, focusing on motivation i don't need motivation it's actually when you feel like you need motivation it's really bad like it's it means you're gonna you're you're looking for ways to to not move because you basically add a new thing that you don't need by default like like uh because you you're like i you decided i need to be motivated so i need to feel like i want to do this uh, you're not going to do it until you feel like it. So you just created like a huge uh, constraint on yourself. Yeah. Um, but when you kind of accept like, okay, uh, I can be depressed. I can be unhappy. You know, the, the day that I realized, and this was so big for me, like I can be depressed and still do everything. <laughs> like I can be depressed and read. And I can be depressed and work out. I can be depressed and meditate. I can be depressed and make videos. And then I realized like, hey, but so I'm depressed and then I'm not depressed. But when I'm out of the depression, I still have all the, the, the benefits I gained. So you work out, you know, it doesn't matter how, what your mood was. It matters what you did. Uh, you know, your body doesn't care. Um, and, you know, I even realized in some avenues like videos, the videos are even better <laughs> when you're like angry or depressed because you get more emotions into it. Yeah. Um, it's more raw. Um, sure. So, so I don't focus on this, but what I do focus on is, and again, you, you can show the book because uh, it's, it's very related. Sure. <laughs> um, so thanks Grant, Grant Cardone. Uh, yeah. I, I focus on my, you know, obsession is, is that thing that you can't stop thinking about. So you all, I'm a, an obsessed guy. So I always have to obsess with something. Um, you know, at some point, it's been obsession with weights. Some point it's been obsess, obsession with money. Obsession, obsessions with women. Like I got so obsessed with one girl. You know, you, I was like possessed, like a demon grabbing. So now I just choose, you can, because you can choose what to be obsessed about. I choose to obsess over my daily goals. So I have a, a daily on my iPhone, iPhone, but you can use an Android too. I have an, an app. It's called Notes. You know, the default app on Android, yeah. you can use Evernote easily. Yeah. Yeah. And I basically have um, a, a daily template uh, where I write down my, my goals, my goals in life, mm-hmm. uh, you know, tasks for the day, kind of really things I just need to get done today. Yeah. Um, like for example, send an email to Grant Cardone's assistant. So it's like, like one time activities and then a quote, which, you know, is, I, just, I, it's my job to look for a quote that will kind of motivate me for the day in the context of what I'm experiencing. So I'll just use that quote and also even post it on Instagram every morning. So it's even part of my routine. And then the big part is the list of daily goals. So it's like a checklist that I need to click on to check, check off. And right. it's, it's a list of over 30 things that I do every single day. And I miss at least about one, maybe two every day, but it's never the same one. So I might, you know, today I might, uh, instead of writing 15, 10 pages, I might write three or instead of meditating for an hour, I might do it for 20 minutes or I might even not work out, you know, one time. But all in general, out of the 30 things, I do about 28, maybe 30 every single day. Wow. And that's what I'm obsessed about. From the moment I wake up till the moment I go to bed, I focus on the list. I look at the list about, I guess, 100, maybe 200 times a day. I just open it and open it and open it. And every time I, I do something, 
it, it's funny because the motivation comes after because I do something and then I check it off. I click on it. I see a check mark. I get motivated. I get dopamine. You know, I get, yeah. oh, like, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then I, I, for example, one of the daily goals is to write an article and yeah. to post it on warrior forum. So it's two goals. So when I do it, it's like, bam, bam. And then I feel like, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> and I do a video and then I do, bam, fuck yeah. And then I work out. And while I work out, I listen to an audiobook. And after working out, I always go to the, to the sauna and then take a cold shower. So it's like, bam, 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 bam. It's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> so, so that's how I kind of pump myself up. It's just by accomplishing. Yeah. Um, so I could even be depressed. And on the depressing day, I'll, I'll be like, oh, I hate everything. This sucks. And I'll do it. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> then, <laughs> no, this is awesome. You know, this is a big learning for me. You know, I'm glad that we're having this conversation because I never thought of uh, that way. You know, if I'm depressed and if I'm, all, if I'm not in mood, I probably will not do that thing. But, you know, I realize now if you still get that thing done, then you're in better mood tomorrow. You'll realize, oh, good. You know, I, I got this thing done. It's so great. It still counts. <laughs> it really still counts, man. But really. By the way, the, the, there's two reasons. So, yeah, first one is that it still counts. But the second one, and this is a small secret I'll tell you because sometimes I talk with the universe you'll find out once you start doing this and you know I, I anybody could take my bet on this you'll find out that when you do it even though you're depressed or angry or whatever it is and you know how before you go to bed you feel kind of you know the depression is coming tomorrow mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you're about to go to bed and you already know that tomorrow you're going to be depressed. Yeah. When I have that moment, I get happy. I get excited while being depressed because I'm like, okay, I can feel myself getting depressed and I get excited because I know one simple truth. I don't know if it's the universe or God or, or karma or, or I don't know why, but when you have a day where you're depressed and you still do all the things you sh you needed to do you get rewarded big time for it. and sometimes it's in things that are you know that make sense like for example your mood gets better you get happier you make good things happen but it's whack like lucky events like that client you couldn't close if you do everything you needed to do at the end of the day he'll call you back and he'll say he wants to pay. You know, that girl you wanted to meet at the end of the day, yeah. she'll call you. You get lucky when you take action, even though you don't want to. It's like you're building karma or something. Mm -hmm. So it's always worked for me. There's not been a single day in my life right. where I, was, I felt bad. Mm -hmm. I took the daily actions and I didn't get lucky some in, in something in my life that day or the next day really right. that that simple and 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 also um one final point before you move on is that the daily habits they defend me because i've been through so much shit because of the mistakes i've made that i had to find a way to protect myself right so that if if somebody like if if something happens and it's distracting and, or, or somebody made me feel really bad and I feel like shit. So I won't go into my bad habits and, and I don't know, go smoke weed or, or, or just say, fuck the day. I hate this day. I'm not going to do anything. You know, fuck it. Or eat a lot. So, so it protects me because no matter what happens, I stick to the, to the list. It anchors me. I call it the anchor factor. And so I get pulled around, you know, you get pulled around life. It's money issues, relationship issues, moods, yeah. random things that happen, horrible people. You get pushed around, you get but because you're tied with an anchor to the ground, you can't ever be pulled outside of the boundaries. Right. Like if this is the boundary, you always stay like in the yeah. boundaries and you still finish the day strong. So you get power from that. You, you, you feel 
like nothing could stop you because you really ask yourself like what can honestly stop me like somebody shooting me somebody you know killing me somebody like that's it like as long as i have free movement whatever happens in my life it's secondary because you know i'm not saying don't deal with it because i even have a daily goal of dealing with things so yeah. i have a daily goal that before i go to bed i have to make sure Anybody who contacted me, you know, good, bad, I have to get back to them. Sometimes I don't want to, but I do. So I never leave things, you know, I don't, it doesn't mean like don't take care of your life. But what it means is that you force yourself, you force growth, you force it on your health, on your wealth, on your relationships, on everything in your life. You force it to grow. So you feel bad, fuck the bad feeling. You still force yourself to grow. Somebody Mm -hmm. hurt you fuck that guy, but I still grow. Um, money issues, it fucking sucks. I'll deal with it, but I still make sure I grew my income today, or at least I, I potentially grew my income today so that whatever happens, as bad as it may be, in a year from now, I'm going to be, like, if I'm here, I'll be there in all areas of my life. Right. You know, all, the, all the people that, you know, made me feel bad, they're going to be more negative. They're going to hate themselves even more. They're not going to increase their income. The, the body are going to be, you know, is going to be in less good shape. No, but it's not even because of that. It just, it's just you move forward. So you, because you know that if right now you have financial problem, problems on this level, but you know, and you're right now on this level, but you know next year I'm going to be on this level. I, I'm going to force it. So could it really be that bad? Like even if I couldn't take care of it now, maybe a month from now I would be able to, maybe two months, maybe half a year, maybe a year. But again, you turn time into your ally. So when you look into the future, uh, when people, they, when they don't see growth in any area of their life and they don't see it happening, that's when they get depressed and desperate and miserable. It's when you look f- to the future and you don't see anything getting better. But when you force it and you have that discipline and you know you're going to do it every single day, then you look into the future and it's always bright. Yeah. Because you, you literally realize unless somebody's going to like kill me or something, <laughs> I'm, nobody can stop me from growing. And, and, and because I'm not talking about fantasy growing. I'm not talking about one day I'll be a multimillionaire superstar. I'm talking about yeah. whatever you have, you know you're going to have more. It's a fact. I'm not saying you're going to be, you work out every day. I'm not saying you're going to be a bodybuilder, but I, I am saying guaranteed you're going to have a better physique, a better body, better strength. You know, you meditate every day. I'm not saying, you know, you're going to be the Dalai Lama, but you are going to be more relaxed. Yeah. Okay. You focus on your growth in marketing and in your sales abilities. Yeah. I'm not saying you're going to be Warren Buffett, but you're definitely going to make a lot more money. Yeah. That kind of really, really explains the anchor thing. I love it. Love it. And, yeah. I will, and, then, and then, and then what I said about the goals, again, you asked me, um, I, I told you like, I don't look into the future. I don't look two years, five years. I know that if I keep doing this, I'm always going to be growing, which is really what I care about. I just care about, you know, my life getting better and better. Yeah. And if I'm lucky, I'll hit it big. Okay. So, so if I'm lucky, I'll get to 10 million subscribers, you know, and if I'm lucky, I'll be worth hundreds of millions. And if I'm lucky, I'll have a a body like, uh, you know, like uh, Zach Afron and and Baywatch. (laughs) But even if I don't get there, you know, would you really be that disappointed if you've, get to age 80 and you're only worth 50 million or you only have, you know, half a million subscribers or, you know, however, as long as you're growing, you feel good. And sometimes you feel bad because you feel like you're not growing fast enough. And that's just an opportunity to grow even faster. Right. So every once in a while I do my daily habits and I start feeling a bit dissatisfied again. Cause I'm like, Oh, I could do more. So, so you get used to the, you know, to the pressure you could say, 
and then you add a bit more and then you add a bit more. So even the efforts keep growing. And obviously once you have employees and you delegate certain things, then you have more time available, then you can have more habits. So, you know, the growth always continues. So everything except your, your body, you know, cause you have to do the work yourself. Yeah. Everything except your body can keep growing. Even if other people just keep the habit for you and you just pay them. Very interesting. Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful explanation. Thank you so much. A lot of things to learn, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep inspiring people and helping people. I'm, you know, I'm really happy that we had this conversation. Awesome, dude. So that's it? That's all you want to know? That's all, man. Yeah. I really enjoyed talking to you. Awesome. Me too. So uh, can you quickly just tell people about you? Because I actually think you're... Uh, a really awesome guy and and again i just i won't go on this call uh with you know just anyone uh so when i saw your videos about sales uh i mean i was like well that that's a that's a cool guy <laughs> same here feeling is mutual man feeling is mutual yeah so yeah i'll, I'll talk about a little little bit about myself then so um my name is dave gadby been an average guy for many, many years until I stumbled upon Grant Cardone and Red 10X Rule that really opened my eyes. You know, since, since then, you know, since I, I, I know that I've been average, there's a lot of catching up to do. Um, I really got purpose of my life, which is I am a sales guy, okay? And that's all I know to do, right? So I'm in a mission to help 10 million people. And uh, the question, a lot of people ask me why 10 million? I said, look, I learned from Grant Cardone that if, if I target my, you know, 1 million, I probably will fall short of it and will not look good as compared to if I target 10 million, if I fall short of that, it's fine. So my goal is to help 10 million people in, in whatever way or form I can. Uh, things that I've started doing is I've started posting blogs, videos to help people inspire. And that has really changed a lot. Me as a person as well. Uh, I've started the WhatsApp group where I have 70 plus people who are part of the winners club. So that is part of my routine. I share videos with them and they inspire me back, right? So it's more like a force which is inspiring me back. Um, yeah, born and brought up in a, in a very uh, humble family. Where my father was a truck driver and uh, me and my brother fortunate enough to uh, get the education in English medium. So look, things which I did not have, the sales mentor, which was missing in my life for 13 years, I feel that if I had that force, I could have grown, gone places and I could have made difference to a lot of people's life. And um, now today in that, I'm in that situation where a little bit of whatever I could have, you know, uh, learned from different people and whatever has been working for me, I'm trying to share that with everybody and uh, see if that makes difference to them and making them aware that the things that I have lost, time which I have lost in the last 10, 10, 13 years, I want, I, I don't want them to lose, I want them to, you know, they can look up to somebody and say, Hey, you know what? That guy is accessible. You know, they can have a mentor like Grant Cardone, but is he accessible to everybody? He's not right. So I can be that person, probably a soundboard, uh, to a lot of people. And, uh, I'm still doing that. I've started receiving a lot of appreciation from people out of 70 people who are there on WhatsApp group, uh, you know, probably 50 people. I don't even know them. Uh, but still, you know, I'm connected through them. Uh, I'm still just, you know, still learning, still growing, long way to go. But that's about me, uh, working with a market research company as an associate director. And I've uh, been you know, hoping to make big someday, uh, just like you. So thank you. Thank you, really. Really, you know, it's, it's an honor. Thank you that you took uh, time uh, and, and we'll be speaking, having this conversation. Sure, sure. It's my pleasure. And it's also very rare to come up with somebody who's kind of as genuine as you you know, humble and genuine, uh, which is a really, really cool thing. So, um, yeah, anybody who's interested in sales, yeah. um, I mean, that, that's what I personally most uh, like about you, your content. Of course, not just sales, you know, like just do this, but like sales and kind of inspirational thinking about sales, then, yeah, I definitely uh, recommend you check the guy out. Thank you. Awesome. Pleasure. Thank it's you. Great talking.
Pleasure. My pleasure. Ravi, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Sure. Bye-bye. Take care.